Hello, hello, it's XFM Friday here on the Mandy Kane Lane channel, Series 1, Episode 10, Ricky, Steven, and Carl. Let's enjoy, shall we? And that is my radio voice. Ta-ta. <laughs> um, yep, I said everything I need to say. So, there we go. That, I'm done. So I can just wrap up the video. <laughs> okay, no, um... Yeah, I think everything is where it needs to be, so we're just going to do this. Um, I love these. And apparently, they have been falling on Fridays, which is absolutely wonderful that I can stick to that as well as I can. So we're going to continue with that. And um, I, wasn't, I did not pay attention to the date of last time, but yeah, okay, no. See, because Claire something or other was the last one of the year, so this is the new one of their year, the second one of their year. All right, cool. Let's do this. Carl, full Carl. I'm expecting full chaos and full Carl. So we're good. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Rusty Dog, for making this video. You have been doing an excellent job. I really appreciate it. His channel is in the description. The link is in the description. If you guys want to support and help him out or whatever, subscribe. I don't know all those words. I don't use those words. But he does a wonderful job on these, and I'm very appreciative. I think I said that right. So let's go. Hi, Eve Sayer, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. He's with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sentences He's and all that. Just using the well, traditional you English language. But you put me off, you pointed <laughs> to yourself, and I just said Steve Merchant. But you know what, we normally do that every week. You introduce me. Yeah. You say with me, and I go Steve Merchant. No, yeah. So like, it's a catchphrase that everyone's How waiting to hear. Get but it usually right. I go Ricky Gervais and that, and you go with Steve Merchant. But this time you pointed to you, so I said it. But I didn't say it. I, it caught me off guard, so I didn't <laughs> use the sentence. Oh, I don't like the way you sit. Right? I've read medically that if you're slouching like that, can you try and describe how you're sat? It's but you've got the kind of mic. Have you ever seen that picture of when John Lennon was off his head on smack recording Let It Be, and he was lying on the floor at Abbey Road? <laughs> That's basically got, what Ricky okay, is like okay, now. scared. It's not good for you. That look at the you not you you can't breathe properly in the diaphragm, no. so you're going to get speak badly. <laughs> Listen, ah, I was trying oh. to speak medical stuff there. I'm yeah, trying to yeah. trouble. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Rick, 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 what? what are the words to wham rap? <laughs> no, what are the words to hey, I don't remember wham rap. What the hell's got into you? Uh, hey, sucker. Now there's nothing you can do. <laughs> Brilliant. I look forward to um, a forthcoming revival of your music career. Yeah. Rick, I had some devastating news last night. Go on. You know when I left you, I was off to buy a PlayStation 2. Yeah. I just, I was totally in the mood for or it. Or a I'd... PS2, as he said. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which confused him, Grandad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, my God. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think I went yeah. in, like, uh, some electrical stop on, uh, Oxford Street. Yeah. And, uh... So, the thing I'll just say, the thing about Steve is, is, I wouldn't say he's mean. He hates that. Um, he's careful, right? And he will, he will spend days to get a pound off. Rick. Go Two on. and a half hours I walked around last no. night. I swear to God, walking to different shops, right? I went from Oxford Street to Piccadilly Circus back again, along the length of Oxford Street back again, all over the place, right? I realised I basically couldn't get a better deal than about 240 quid, right? right. For a, a console and a game. Right. So I ended up in Virgin Mega Store, I bought a uh, Auto Grand Theft 3 or whatever, yeah. and a PlayStation and a memory <laughs> card. Right? So I shoot off and I'm walking off and I'm going to the tube and I walk all the way to HMV um, <clears throat> on uh, opposite. Oh my God, that was just great. HMV, his master's voice, okay, is a music store chain, but was originally a record label created. Awesome. The dog is called Nipper. Oh, I absolutely love that he said Grand Theft Auto wrong. Bond Street. Sure. And I just popped in there because I'd forgotten to get something. And I went downstairs and I was walking past the uh, PlayStations and it went, if you buy a PlayStation 2, you can get Grand Theft Auto 3 with there 20 pounds off. Oh. I was absolutely devastated. What did you do? I just, I'm I, sorry, oh. I was at Auto 3 with 20 pounds off. Oh. oh. I was absolutely devastated. What did you do? I just, I, 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 I crumbled. I didn't know what to do. I was thinking of taking it back to Virgin Megastore, going, it's faulty. Uh, but like oh before, no. you haven't even got it home yet. Oh, I can tell. No, I didn't mean to buy this, though. What did you <laughs> need to buy? Keyboard. <laughs> exactly. I to buy a... So the problem is, when I get it back and I wire it up and that, all I can see is the cars are racing around the track. All I'm thinking is, it's like one of those cartoons when a really hungry bloke could just <laughs> see his mate as like a big chicken. <laughs> <laughs> all I could see on the TV was just a 20-pound <laughs> note just floating. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was an absolute oh night. I'm just devastated by it. 20 quid. I could have bought, like, another cheap game for that. We went, uh, did I tell you this? We went, we're, would you give me 20 pounds and then I'll shut up about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we went to the casino once, a group of us, and I lost about 100 quid. And, uh, it was, it was a, you know, great, it was, it was someone's birthday. Uh, I think it was Jane's birthday. And Steve, after three hours of gambling, had lost the 20 pounds he got out to play with, right? I was going, you're really gutted, aren't you? You just went, you, have you any idea how much cheese I could get for 20 pounds? <laughs> yeah. oh, cold meats. Yeah. For cold. 20 pounds. And there it is again last night. <laughs> 20 pounds. I'm robbed of 20 pounds. Literally, they've taken it from my hand. Yeah. The HMV people. <laughs> they've taken it. that and they've. I'm going to try and away. think of some things to cheer you up. Should we play some songs? <laughs> Avalanche is there. Frontier Psychiatrist. I never enjoy any record where I think I or a four year old could have made it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like it's cheating. It's musical um, cheating. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one. I won't play that again then. Alright? <laughs> okay. That's done. Yeah. Alright. Nice. Shake on it. Yeah. Lovely. XFM. You know what's fun? My, both my brothers are musicians and one. He focuses more on like electronic and dance music and stuff. And, um,. He's actually the one that make, made my outro music. But um, he hates Daft Punk. Hates Daft Punk for that reason. He says, like, they, they're they cheating, basically. I love Daft Punk, and he doesn't get it. And it just, he, he, like, the way he rides it off that it's okay or acceptable for me, he's like, yeah, chicks love it. I'm like, dude, no, a lot of people love it because, I don't know, I just personally, it's, it's, it's good music to dance to, to work out to, to just drive to to lift up your it's it's fun music and i like that and he hate he calls it cheating that just reminded me because i mean i there are some famous artists nowadays they're all getting sued left and right too when they just there's some that just steal songs from like the 70s 80s and just do the exact same thing and call it their own <laughs> they don't even call it a cover they call it their own and they're just getting sued left and right so that to me is cheating right but i think daft punk can make makes their samples and stuff quite original i don't know i'm, I'm gonna defend daft punk because i like them One oh, point kiss nine. on it kiss on it touch oh. on it carl came in this morning and he said he was soaking wet because obviously it's miserable out and actually if you're thinking of leaving the house today and thus missing the show do not leave because it's miserable out it's, it's like a weather fun. report as well we play music we've got chat we have little jokes don't we but carl um, came and it's morning. raining he said he was soaking wet I'm yeah i said to him i said reviews. rick would want you to do it i want yeah. you to do it yeah just take your clothes off pop yeah. them over there but do you know what and he wouldn't and he said i was gonna do it but i knew you'd say that but when you left us in the kitchen when he was making coffee, he went, yeah, Steve said, if you're wet, take your trousers off. And I thought, hold on, Ricky's not here. What's he up to? Little <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thoughts. No, yeah. I was talking on behalf of Rick. I phoned him up. I said, he, he's wet. What shall I suggest? Well, I said, well, I, and I, I was in his ear. I was, he had earpiece, and I was going, tell him it's bad for him. Yeah. And I could hear him go, it's bad for you. You go, well, no, I'm right. no, tell him it's, it could. Rheumatism. Yeah. It could lead to rheumatism. Drop, take him off. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> Carl, speak. No one's heard your voice today. Come on, Carl. Come he on, doesn't want it. No, I know he doesn't. We're not. We won't talk to you much. But right, go on. It's just nice to say hello to you. Yeah. Right. People, right. I think people quite like they tune to in know you're here. You. Yeah. We've had some fan mail. For I you. like his little face. His little Moby. I drew a picture of him in the week. Just <laughs> doodling. He got really insulted. Did he? Why did you get insulted? So it wasn't very good. I looked like Ian Camfield, like. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Camfield's big break came at XFM, oh, okay, in the UK's first alternative station, where he became a respected music authority. While on XFM, Ian broke music from some of the biggest UK exports, including Coldplay, Arctic Monkeys, and Muse. Interesting. Oh, it did he? Why did you get insulted? So it wasn't very good. I looked like Ian Camfield, I like. <laughs> oh, what's an insult? Yeah. The ladies love Canfield. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're weird kind of heavy metal ladies. Yeah, but yeah. the, the ones that drink blood. Yeah. Yeah, they love Canfield. I thought of you look like today, but I think you might find it insulting as well. It's just meant to be affectionate. You look, for people who don't know what you look like, you look like Beaker at the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't see how that would be an insult. <laughs> Ah! Oh God! We don't need to put it like that. It is, but it's sort of like I like Beaker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you like him because he's a fool. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes. M what does he do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, you look a bit like that doctor that used to accompany him everywhere. That professor. Oh yeah, the little fat. Yeah, little yeah, one ain't. yeah, that's that. Nice. Was Carl, just, what was it that you told me as well when you weak. came in? Just, just Carl's <laughs> thought for the day. Okay. Carl, what did you tell me when you came in? Because it was miserable out, and you, and you so made it. Suggestion. It is a grim day in London. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. I was, I was thinking, um, oh. could you imagine dying today? <laughs> Go on, can you explain more though? Just because when you're dying, yeah. you're always like in your bedroom, in your bed, and your, always. And always. your family's next door. Always, always. yeah. And um, I just thought, can you imagine lying there, looking out your window, because they do that as well, they sort of have the curtains open to get a bit of light on your face. Oh. And I just thought, what a day, if this was like your last day, could you imagine? But then go on. You made XFM, another. One no, four no, four no. Five. You made another more, more, even more profound, profound point. You said if instead of dying on a rainy day, you'd prefer to. No, if you died on a on a bit of a, a nicer sunny day, then it's not so bad. What? <coughs> so, no, it's your last day looking out on the world. Yeah. And it, look at it. Don't you agree? Yeah. I, can't, I thought that was a beautiful point. It was poetic. Almost. Was it? It was, wasn't it? Some people freaking it, love the rain. Dude. No, I don't. no, the point was that, that what, what upset me was that you said you'd been thinking about that today on the way in, and it upset you. But uh, my point was that there's, if you think about the people that are dying any day, it'll upset you. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah, but you don't think about it when when it's sunny because you think <laughs> oh, they'll be all right today. They won't be that annoyed. You're absolutely annoyed. Like, annoyed. But today, <laughs> think of that. Oh, I'm written no. off. Oh, I'm dying today. <laughs> <in May. laughs> oh, it was just when I got up and opened the curtains and I thought, look at it. I'm yeah. glad I'm not dying today. Mm. Yeah. Carl, play a song. You're yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. <laughs> you know what I noticed? I mean, I luckily don't know many people that have passed away. So I've been to very few funerals and there's a lot of messed up stuff in my family, which... I don't want to get into, but I should. I let's just say I should have gone to more funerals, and nobody ever told us when there would be. I just, I, I don't know. I don't get it. My family is extremely weird. But um, that aside, I always found it very interesting that the few people I knew that passed away, maybe not the day they passed away, but the day where it was either the funeral or the ceremony or whatever you want to call it. Whatever, the service, I don't know, there's a lot of words for it, was always just like the nicest day ever. The skies were never bluer. If there was a cloud, it was like those perfect marshmallowy, fluffy clouds, like just cotton candy clouds that are just in paintings are that perfect. And just like sunny, but not like you're not dying of heat. Like, it, it, I, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know if. if, if Somebody was controlling that or whatever, but I found that very interesting. I note like to the point where I started noticing that when it was a funeral service or whatever, it was just the most spectacular weather day ever. Again, I can't recall the actual days, <laughs> if it were raining or not or whatever. But you know how in the movies, every time someone dies, every time, every funeral, it's always gray. And it's pouring rain, and everybody has those big black umbrellas to make them look sadder or whatever. And um, my life experience has been the complete opposite. And I always thought that was quite interesting. So I don't, I don't know if anybody has noticed anything like that. Like if it's a universal thing or it's just the way it's been happening for me. But I always thought that was odd. Oh, God, speak of heat, man. Jeez. Mole Historical Society. Watching Xanadu on XFM 104.9. Watching? I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. See, it doesn't work if you say with me, Steve no, Merchant. it doesn't work. I've got to say either. I've either <laughs> got to say with me, or you just go with Steve Merchant. Sure, sure, sure. See what I mean? Okay. It's not as easy, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> no. It's not as easy as it seems. You know this, right? I mean... <laughs> what? <laughs> radio show. Oh, yeah, yeah. We do, right? Well, we just come in and we don't plan them. We just sort of, like, chat. And it, it, they you still pay us. It seems yeah. good, Omar. Should we just do this all day? Or all day on XFM, or or, or just get a like, get a license where it is just it's Ricky and Steve FM, <laughs> and we just chat and we go, "What are you doing there, Steve? Just having breakfast." You go, "All oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. Oh, what are you Didn't doing there? Steve? Oh, just cleaning the windows, isn't it? And we have a little chat. And we go, "Oh, just reading the paper," and it, we just talk and we play records for twenty four hours a day. Yeah. Oh. I mean, have you spotted any flaws in that plan? Or? Yeah, it'll be boring <laughs> after about an hour and a half. Yeah. 
<laughs> is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. I mean, this is boring now. No, and it's we've really, only done 20 minutes. No, it's just, the, it, we were talking about a car having a thought, remember? <laughs> a thought. Yes, yes. And then I had that thought when I went, I went out to get some orange juice and I had that thought. So maybe this show can be about, let's, let's have thoughts. Okay. Oh. So we have thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> okay, or they could, if we haven't got any, they could phone in with some. Okay, or email a thought maybe, if you've got a thought. Just email yeah. that in. Just we can talk about it. at xfm.co.uk. Could be a thought about anything. Hey, can, we, go on. Don't, can we not make those thoughts racist or homophobic, though, please? Yeah. Good call. Um, not downers. No, nothing that's going to bring us down, you know? Yeah. Upbeat stuff. Yeah. Like, on, Carl, you do, gonna... do you know the weather when you die? <laughs> sure. When you said 24 hours, then. Yeah. Do you know how much it takes <laughs> to run one of the escalators on the underground? For 20 hours a day, how much it costs a year to do that? To run it how long? 20 hours a day? Yeah, that's what it runs. The, the is this another price. of your your facts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are always these are always substantiated by an independent source, aren't they? They're not just something you overheard on a bus. Am I, <laughs> just just to check. This I is fact. I read it. I read it. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? Did I read it on a wall. In so, a, yeah, in a Sometimes I wish this was on telly because when Steve said this, you have these substantiated by an independent arbitrator. Or something, Carl just looked at him. Yeah. Like he'd just spoken French. <laughs> he just looked like that. It just, the V thing okay, so anyway, he has this, here, this is just... it's so bizarre. I saw him on The Moaning of Life. There was like an episode where he got Botox and stuff. And then I happened to notice that weird V thing after the Botox started like wearing off in the next episodes or whatever. And I thought that was a result from that. And I commented and everybody's like, no, he always had that weird little V thing. That is probably where his um, mind stone would go if he were vision. <laughs> But that face, that's like his almost permanent face. <laughs> okay, so anyway, this this information you've got from a reliable source, you read it on the back of a fag packet or something? No, I think it was in the Metro magazine in the week. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, okay. So okay. Here's the, what's, and let's just hear it again. How much does it cost? Yeah, there's loads of escalators, isn't there, on the underground? Yes. And they run for 20 hours a day. Yes. Don't tell us how- tell you record. what, Carl, that's such a fascinating fact. Don't yeah. tell us, let's play a record, Rick. Okay. And then people can stay tuned if they want to hear this how much is it like, costs. <laughs> this is <laughs> like some sort of mental home radio. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? I mean, we- we are- I mean, we- we're not mentally ill. We haven't- you know, we haven't got- I haven't had any uh, head trauma. Um, we're educated people. Yeah. But we come out with just rubbish. Gobbledygook. Just nonsense. It's like- I can't grasp. I don't know why he started saying. I've no, I've no idea what that thought you just was. Said, you just said 24 hours about doing radio for 24 hours. So I remember. I thought, oh, 20. 20 Not hours. only that, they were literally saying, "All right, let's talk about thoughts." And then he surprised. Oh, where did that thought come from? I mean, Ricky, do better. <laughs> or said you just said 24 hours about doing radio for 24 hours. So I remember. I thought, oh, 20, 20 hours. <laughs> It's so, right so there. So we're now, we're now examining right the there. thought processes that we all have. <laughs> oh, before no. we get to them. Let's just hear a song. Okay, right, it's half past one, and that film sounds good. Ooh, that film feature, sounds good. Feature, feature, feature. This is where I choose a song from a film that, oh, that film sounds good, see? Uh, this is um, a, a, a film that me and Steve both love, and he actually, he saw it first and got me onto it and said I'd love it, and I did. It was Rushmore. Okay. It's a great film, and from it, it features one of my favourite artists of all time. Um, the Wind by Cat Stevens, and this is off the first album I ever bought from Teaser in the Firecut. This is The Wind from Rushmore. That film sounds good. <laughs> feature, feature, feature. <laughs> Cat Stevens, The Wind. Elegant. That's a beautiful song. The album is is a, a superb album. It's it, it's seminal. It's just has some great songs on it. I feel like playing another one, maybe a song for the lovers. Maybe do it later. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I could do that, yeah. Oh my it's God. beautiful. I have to say I've uh, seen the uh, the follow up to Rushmore. If oh, you yeah. enjoy Rushmore, it's this new film, The Royal Tenenbaums, with amazing cast, Ben Stiller's in it, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and Gene Hackman in his Golden Globe winning uh, performance. Oh, yeah. Same sort of thing as Rushmore, same kind of style, but a uh, lovely sort of uh, kind of family comedy. Absolute dynamite and again a brilliant soundtrack. Nico is on there, Nick yeah. Drake, all kinds of treats. Forthcoming in the cinemas, Rick. Are you say the follow up, is it the it's same not a director. sequel. It's the same director, same writer, right. some of the same cast. Bill Murray makes another appearance. Isn't same style. Um, um, the Swingers lot done another one. They have. Their new films made with the right. same John Favreau and uh, Vince Vaughn. Again, dynamite. Really good fun. Not as kind of perceptive as Swingers, but certainly as much fun. Have you seen Swingers, Carl? I haven't I seen so. any of the ones Is they it mentioned. The one where, um, None of them. I know who almost everybody that appeared like on the posters are, which is like big for me, but. I haven't seen any of these. Wow, Vince Vaughn looks young there. <laughs> I imagine it's because he was. <laughs> it's got a line in it. It's got a catchphrase. Have you seen Swingers, Carl? 
I think so. Is it the one where, um, they've got a line in it, they've got a catchphrase in it, haven't they? You're the money? You're money. No. You're that's so Jeremy money. G that's it, yeah, yeah, mm. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. I love the fact that I said, you're the money, you went, no. You went, you're so the money, you went, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I thought the same thing. Okay. Well, yours is from, uh, what's his name? Yeah, Jerry Maguire. No, that's yeah. show me the money. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Anyway, See, that was really articulate. We had uh, uh, we did a feature. It linked into film. <laughs> uh, Steve Love Films did a little, um, you know, uh, 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 off the cuff review. Then it went into gobbledygook again. Yeah, that, <laughs> I can't even say it. Yeah, you couldn't even say the word gobbledygook. It's, yeah. <laughs> anyway, listen. You had an interesting fact you were going to give us, Carl. I don't think we can leave people waiting for this any longer. No. Please don't. Right. <clears throat> um, how much does it cost to run one escalator? That's just one. What yeah. are the sounds? On a London underground. It's running 20 hours a day because it shuts for four hours in the night when they're cleaning up and that. Yeah. yeah. How much does it cost to run it for a year? £12. <laughs> £60,000. The trouble with... Ah, uh, isn't inflation fun? Did inflation 60000 in 2002, that's current year, is worth... Oh, snap. hundred and three. Oh, what? <laughs> I love that the... Oh. Oh, isn't that sweet? Uh, is worth. I love how it's just sixty thousand. Nice round number, and then inflation makes it a weird number. <laughs> Hundred three thousand seven hundred forty-four, two thousand twenty-four. Damn, that's a lot. And um, equivalent to the pesos. And I just want to say that that number is probably inaccurate, not because you fudged up, but because the info given to the world on the Argentinian peso is just, it's incorrect. And also because just stuff is so messed up here, there are like seven or eight different exchange rates. Um, so yeah, but still quite the difference. Ta-da! <laughs> That's just depressing. These facts is... Yeah, 12 pounds. <laughs> 60,000 The little sounds pounds. Ricky is making is funny. The trouble with these facts is I, I've got nothing to compare it against. It, well, well, think about, like, <coughs> your yearly electric bill at home. <laughs> well, when you put it like that... Right. When you can... It's a lot, isn't it? When you think they could just use stairs. <laughs> Carl, play a song. <laughs> Actually, Politics. okay, dude, he has a point, because they could totally just use stairs. One thing is having elevators for people that can't do stairs, but... That is a lot of money to run something that's just basically a lazy version of stairs. Dude, just go upstairs. I mean, I, I, it's like having street lamps on in the daytime. Like, and you're paying for that. There's no need. I mean, if it's a rainy day or whatever, they could be useful. But, I mean, you know? <laughs> I'm with Carl on that, right? On XFM 104.9. This man is brilliant. It's a lot, isn't it? When you think they could just use stairs. <laughs> Carl, play a song. No, dude. Politics <laughs> on XFM 104.9. <laughs> Please, people, just point. use the stairs. <laughs> Brothers, star guitar. I'm gonna be honest, Steve. I like the video more than the song. Agreed. <laughs> Good. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was I don't know what I was doing. I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably. And he just looked at me. I looked around. He was looking at me, and I looked back, and he went, "Have you ever used a Y front properly?" Genius. A it's what? a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. Ed, does any what question do you use call the Y it? front back? Y and he front? Went, Have you ever used a Y front properly? Genius. It's a great question because oh, the answer is definitely it. no. Definitely no. Has, Ed, does anyone use their Y front properly? And by that I mean, you mean get properly? your winky out of the little sort of um, slot provided as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Y front properly? I don't think I've. Ever done it? I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got you. Really? Yeah, what the yeah. hell, dude? That's actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah, yeah, and it's a trap. Um, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You didn't prove I was gay. I double bluffed you. Because yeah. <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. <laughs> I thought it was the old gay lord saying no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how. 
Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? <laughs> Gaylord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. Take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to the Well, the judge went to him. Caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? Gaylord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. Take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, is well. True. It originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone. Anyone listening who's. And I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie, wouldn't they? I suppose. Yeah. I don't even use uh, sort of flies. No. Usually, I sort of just sort of sort of pull my wife front, uh, my sort of tracksuit. Now, yeah. That's why I wear sort of like elasticated waistband yes, all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of like. <laughs> you know what's funny that you put that the fly is the zipper. The only like in my bubble <laughs> when I was in the states in my areas of whatever. Um, it's always been zipper, but the only time it's a fly is when it's down. <laughs> I don't know why. Yo, your fly is down. <laughs> but, like, when it's up, it's automatically not a fly anymore. It's a zipper now. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so I wouldn't have caught on with that because, to me, it's just when it's down. <laughs> so thank you for that. Sort of pull my Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, my... I don't even use uh, sort of flies. No. Usually I sort of just... Sort of, sort of pull my wife front, uh, my sort of tracksuit. Yeah. That's why I wear sort of like elasticated waistband yeah. all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to get in there with like the minimum of effort. Yeah. We and out. Sure. Sure. Often I won't shake. No. Well, no. To my detriment, because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later. Oh. Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg and you wish it hadn't, and you're thinking, what if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell or see it. What? <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I said there. Yes, <laughs> right. stop, please. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Well, I was just looking that. at what it was underneath it. Stop, listen to what I'm saying. I know, no, listen, let me explain. People could hear you moving the microphone. Could they? Yeah, I can hear it in my headphone. You know, it's the little <laughs> pop shield that goes over the mic. Yeah. I was going to see where the, what the what way the mic was facing, so I just had a look. Who cares? No one's interested. Leave it. Carl, I'll tell you if there's a problem. Alright. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know when my okay. parents bought this book. I assume it's sort of from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in because there are generally the facts are quite sensible in here, and I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like kind of just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or that this is probably or true. up in Greg's the Baker's that Carl <laughs> exactly. gets most of his facts from. <clears throat> the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> oh, I love that. Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But what, what, what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's ge that's a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they had baboons serving? No, no, I'll tell you what happened. It might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day went, went um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said they're answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's not, it's, not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. <laughs> I wonder, because what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're like, I have tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like, working out that sort of 10%, you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under-tiffing them all the time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just not leaving enough and just leg in it. Exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so tell us comment I or someone. If you do go, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on those, please don't order the banana daiquiri, because it comes half-eaten. They can't help their little selves. They really can't. Whoa, They're okay that, with that, can't help that, their little that. That's a big baboon. Cause he just also he just said like their little selves like I was imagine I I always imagine them I guess a little bit smaller I don't know I feel like that is a a large baboon. Just chilling. Sure. Selves they really can't they're okay with like you know beef and steak and chips and all that but you know, there's a little bug I go do you but <laughs> can you imagine that the baboons serving. At waiting tables. It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen. You could go. If they were serving tickets to two. Uh, yeah, exactly. one child row. Okay, go through there. 
Okay. I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of... Pelican, pool. yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, that also happens. Have you guys ever seen a pelican yawn? It is terrifying! I saw that in a video the other day. Oh my god. Oh my god. If you've never seen that, just do yourself a favor and look it up and be terrified, because that, that's just, it doesn't look right. Mm -mm. Happened in ancient times. <laughs> Doing that again. <laughs> because that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. According to the Flintstones. Yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> that they was, did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely, just, yeah. Just uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. There was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Well, they're not necessarily gay. They're not, they? No one actually knows if they are gay. No, or not. they are. All right. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. Okay. Gilbert and George, is it? No, that's those <laughs> artists. Okay. Well, yeah. They're called Siegfried and Roy. But, yeah. but anyway. Who, have... but who may or may not be gay. Yeah. yeah. And if they are, so what? And if they are, so what? But yeah. if they're not, uh, and they no, don't... I look... just said that so you knew, knew what I was talking about. Cause sure. Okay, the two gay ones. Yeah, yeah, go on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then. Or, yeah, if you on. shave a tiger's head... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa. Right, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head, not just its head, its whole body. If oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, yeah. So I thought you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then. Yeah, if you shave a tiger, <laughs> yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. Skin, the skin. Is stripy. it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, it the, like way all the way through. What the hell does that have to do with Siegfried and Roy? <laughs> also, my cat, you know, Siamese Kitana. Uh, if you don't know her, she's a little Siamese kitty. Siamese cats have a white tummy or a cream-colored tummy. And one time they had to shave her tummy, like a spot on it for just medical purposes. And um, when it grew back, it grew back very dark brown. So she has a little weird brown patch there, and I don't know why that happened. Yeah, Wait. that's amazing. Why did you hear that one? That's, what does it have to that, do with six feet? Was that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> <laughs> I shaved a tiger and it's still striving. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I must yeah. make a note of that thing's calm. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting fact. Well, you know a polar bear? Polar bear's um, skin is actually um, black and its fur is transparent, not white, and it gives the illusion. So it uh, gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If its skin's black, a polar bear skin's and black, and its fur is translucent, and its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we? Well, it's just because the the light reflects. hits it, and the sun reflects on it. Yeah, and it makes it look white. Yeah, so if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at there, night, it would be black. <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> You've embarrassed yourself. Play a record. Oh, I know all about animals. And I just thought I mentioned, I learned a very long time ago. Oh my god, dude. Jesus, that um, white hairs on humans are just, it's your hair, but it's porous, a lot more porous, so the light just travels through, so it's not exactly that it's white, coming out white, but it's basically the same thing. It just has holes and light bounces around in there and just looks white and shiny. Stuff by a record. <laughs> oh, I know all about animals and stuff. Do you really? <laughs> <laughs> Love this song. Didn't they play this song last time? P O D. Bit of pod there. Alive. That's grown on me. Yeah, it's not bad. It, you know, me. it rocks. I mean, we've got to give it that. <laughs> I will certainly time. give it that, Rick. Yeah, XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. <laughs> 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 so more from the uh, facts and trivia book. Edited, as I say, by Sir Isaac Asimov, so not sure. just overheard on the tube or yeah. uh, by a drunk. <clears throat> well, he might have overheard him on a tube by a drunk, drunk. and just put him in the book. <laughs> yes. uh, listen to the whole fact here before you make any judgments. Okay. Sauerkraut was renamed Liberty Cabbage by Americans during wait, wait, the... I can't pay attention to two things at once. Sauerkraut in German literally translates to acid sausage. Oh, scrumptious. It is the result of natural lactic acid fermentation of salted shredded cabbage. I've never really liked that stuff, but okay, good to know. Thank you. I didn't know that's the translation of that. Yeah. Uh, listen to the whole fact here before you make any judgments. Okay. Sauerkraut was renamed Liberty Cabbage by Americans during World War One. Sure. In their denunciation of all things German, some Americans actually kicked Datsuns.
Are they little dogs? Yeah. <laughs> little German dogs. Just give them a kick in. Because they were German. Or they were derived from Germany. I don't know if they got to like a small sort of French village and just said, bring out your Dachshunds. <laughs> Why, what are you going to do to them? Why Nothing. is he pronouncing it like a little bit of food or something. <laughs> You're not going to kick them, are you? Got no, some milk. I've heard about you Americans. No, no, just bring out a little sausage dog. We you say it aggressively. <laughs> he said that aggressively. Like well, no. What the hell does... How are they relating things? Started off talking about sauerkraut and I get it's the same moment, but what the hell? Okay, I also did not know that there was a car called a Datsun. I learned no, something. No, we have a little sausage dog. Okay. Well, you're not going to hurt it, though. Of course I'm not. I'll if you it. hurt it now, it's like it's against the Geneva Convention. I'm everything. not going to kick it. Well, you, I didn't even bring up kicking. Uh, I didn't even <laughs> mention kicking, so why have you, why have you done that? That's, I don't know. Just, well, I, 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 I haven't got a Datsun. Oh, is nobody going to correct him? Yeah. Sorry. That thing down my trousers <laughs> is just a baguette. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that, Carl? Dynamite fact. Baguettes were invented by Napoleon so he could carry him down his leg. <laughs> uh, yeah. We just find yep. there's one more here that I thought might. Uh... I know that there's a lot of those kind of amusing laws and stuff, antiquated laws and that on the yeah. web and things. But again, it's Asimov. I'm thinking it's yeah. true. City Ordinance Number no. Three Five Two in Pacific Grove, California, makes it a misdemeanor to kill or threaten a butterfly. Threaten? <laughs> yeah, you can't even threaten a butterfly. Threaten. So it goes. Don't you Really? How do you threaten a butterfly, though? Thousand dollar fine. Holy Jesus! How, yeah. Or to kill or threaten a butterfly. Threaten? Yeah, you can't even threaten a butterfly. So it goes. Don't even look at it aggressively. <laughs> 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 yeah, butterfly comes down. Wait a minute, I got nothing. Yeah. It goes. Judge. What? Yeah. Bloke looking at me with a net. I wasn't doing anything, I wasn't doing anything. I'm fishing. But what, see, the thing about that is, a lot of the kind of, you know, sort of the wilder butterflies from the wrong side of the tracks, they're just going to take advantage of it. They're going to cruise around, they're going to be playing loud music, yeah. you know, the abusing old people. The you're yeah. un they're untouchable. And they're going to go, have you got a problem with that? <laughs> exactly. You're gonna and no. you're going to go, no, no, it's fine. Go about your business. No. Butterflies there, Rick, in California, running amok. Yeah. Should yeah. repeat it. Yeah. Um, no, then, there's another one that I think you'll be a fan of. Uh... Oh, it might take me a while oh, to find dude, it. Oh, dude, I don't know if I shared this story or not, but it just kind of came back to me. I, I don't know what they're called, but the white butterflies, like the most common white ones that are very simple and floaty and just no pattern whatsoever. Um, one time I was on a field trip. I freaking hate insects, okay? It's just all of them. Yes, that includes butterflies and dragonflies and the pretty stuff and ladybugs and you guys call them ladybirds and whatever. But yes, it, it doesn't matter how cute other people think they are no okay no big no and um that's always been the case for me and i remember we went on a field trip once to some museum i don't know and we ate dinner in like the garden of the museum everybody packed a lunch and blah 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 and i don't know what freaking phenomenon happened or what in the freaking hell but there were hundreds if not freaking thousands of those white butterfly things oh, worst day ever i was hysterical and nobody understand because everybody was like oh, no, this is so pretty this is so nice oh look at the pretty butterflies no dude i was freaking out because there was nowhere to run from them because we were like in a like a garden park slash whatever oh my god Oh my god! <laughs> Every time I remember that, it just gives me the freaking heebie-jeebies. I hate them! And people don't understand that. And part of the thing that made me hate them even freaking more is Spongebob. There's an episode where they show real, 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 real close-up of a butterfly's, like, face. Oh god, are those things freaking disgustingly ugly. Oh god, no. No. That, that stuff traumatized me, okay? So, yeah. Butterflies are a big no-no for me, but dude, worst day ever. Maybe we should play a track. Oh, um, no, no, there's another one that I think you'll be a fan of. Uh, oh, it might take me a while to find it. Maybe we should play a track. Oh wow, that takes us nicely. That's a lovely link. <laughs> that thing about you said about playing a track. Keep going, keep going. Nice little segue. Um, this is song for the lovers, and I've chosen a, a, a great track here um, uh, by Lloyd Cole, oft forgotten, but a great singer-songwriter. 
and this is one of his, uh, best songs, I think. In fact, I think Sandy Shaw covered it in the mid-80s when she had a little bit of that resurgence. Um, it's, uh, Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken? And it's, uh, No! Who would tune. be? Enjoy. Oh, that sounds pretty. Are you ready to be heartbroken? Um, Never. Actually, uh, Lloyd Cole, with his commotions, that was, uh, that was done with, and, uh, yeah, I love it. Beautiful. Cheers. Facts and trivia, the last one, Rick. Go on. Uh, this is they a sobering like lesson for all. Down the mood. Go on. At the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo in 1901, yeah. President William McKinley received a line of citizens, shaking hands with each. In the line was a man with a handkerchief covering one hand. Neither of the two Secret Service men guarding the President was curious enough to take a look at what might be under the handkerchief in the hand of the man. Leon Golzgolz, an anarchist. <laughs> what he had was a loaded revolver. I'm that was sorry, but an that's anarchist the way he said the hand last of the name. man. Leon Golzgolz, an anarchist. Yeah. What he had was a loaded revolver, and when the President thrust his right hand out for the shake, Zolgozd fired twice. McKinley died a week later. So, what he did there, it was outwit the might of presumably the FBI or the yep. Secret Service with a handkerchief. by covering the gun with a handkerchief. Clever. That's brilliant. It's absolutely That's lame. Just think how they had to explain that. And they go, uh, what, what, how did they get, how did he get close enough and shoot the president? And they go, uh, we didn't see the gun. Why? Hanky. Covered it with a hanky, did he? Oh, well, you're not to blame then. <laughs> exactly. We, got, we can't compete with that sort of, you know, didn't you think to look under the hanky? No. No, I just, probably just thought it was a hand. Of course, because right. that's where the hand <laughs> would be. <laughs> Did you not think he was probably holding a gun or something? Didn't do that. We didn't train. We didn't do hiding it with a hanky, did we? Oh, if he didn't do it, then it's not your fault. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But he lived, did he, for a week? The president lived with it for that's, a week, yeah. That's because they had to go to him and they are probably shuffling around his bed going, sorry about that. Why don't you look? I had a hanky, did he? <laughs> oh, well, they're now in jail. Well, they were. Go on. Well, when we went into the jail to give him some bread and water, he had a hanky over his hand. Right, yeah. We, we thought nothing of it. Sure. And it was a gun, yeah. It was a gun and he got out. See? He sh Do you remember the last... Remember the gun? Yeah. That's terrible, isn't it's it? It's pathetic. No one's used that method since. <laughs> I <I've noticed. laughs> I'd hope it was not. effective there, but you don't hear about that now. <laughs> no. People using all kinds of elaborate methods to yeah. assassinate people, poisoning their wine. Yeah. I, mean, I think that was Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> As I recall, they put some poison into his wine. They didn't, they I didn't, didn't study it in history class, that's my memory of but it. But if only they listened to Carl last week, chink the glasses. Always chink the glasses. That shows that they used to te test it, didn't they? Pour a little bit from yours into mine, that means I'm not poisoning you. Yeah. But if you're thinking yeah. of uh, murdering someone, you know, just, a, a dignitary. With a, with a gun. Yeah, but let's pop say... Pop a hanky you, over it. Just think about that. Hanky just pop sheet. a hanky over oh, it. I don't know. Pop it inside an oven glove. <laughs> <laughs> and just yeah. wear that as you go do it with their hands. Or you sooty. Or, or one of those <laughs> big gladiator-style pointing <laughs> yeah. foam hands. That gladiator, gladiator. Yeah. That's genius. Yeah. I'm just using this because I, I love the... I love the no gun in there, there, is there? No. no. It's just a big finger. Check if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we won't then if you said check. <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's oh, unlucky. Do you know, do you, have I ever told you my method, Carl, my genius method of um, assassinating someone? This is brilliant. This is the ultimate crime. Oh, is this the ice cube one? Have I told it to you before? No, but I know that. <laughs> What's that the ice one? cube one? When you, um... Shoot an ice bullet. Shh, you get someone round. Rick, don't say it, don't reveal it, because it's my story to tell. Oh, Blabbing there's two. Out. I know two of them. Well, listen, let me tell you it and see if this is the one, right? Mm. This is genius, mm. right? You rent a room across the street from the person you want to kill, right? Yeah. And then when their window's open one day, right, what you do is, what you've done is you've made an arrow from ice, okay? Mm. And then what you do is you, uh, you, you train, like, to become a, a brilliant marksman with a bow and arrow. It's an yeah. old one. It is brilliant, but it's, this is why it's classic. And then you shoot them with the arrow, then it goes across the street, into their heart, kills them instantly, but what's brilliant is, the arrow, sure. the murder weapon, it then melts, yeah. mm. dries out, there's yeah. no murder weapon. Yeah. And then you can take apart oh, the bow, Another, and another one, Steve, is to stab them, then, stab them, then take it out and walk away. <laughs> no, Same, no murder weapon. No but, there's no, no, but you've got to get into the building, this is the point, you're across the street. Right. You know, the only thing that could get what you is if someone saw you shooting an arrow. What about an arrow on a string? I'm but sorry, I'm no just too focused on no, another, one, another, one, another one, Steve, is to stab them, then stab them, then take it out and walk away. No, Same, no murder weapon. No, but there's no. No, but you've got to get into the building. This is the point. You're across the street. 
Right. The, you know, the only thing that could get what you is if someone saw you shooting an arrow at What about an arrow on a string? Arrow on a string? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, not an arrow on a string, because that's not going to work. What if the string broke as you were trying to loop? Good point, good point, good no, point. Rick, I, I no, Rick, the ice like, arrow is the only way. The ice right, arrow is the genius. only perfect method it's, of assassination. An, that was on Columbo. Was it? But th there's another one. Do you know, like I was saying about the, uh... The murder weapon's irrelevant, Steve. What? The fact that it's a murder weapon that is irrelevant. No, because there's uh, fingerprints on it and stuff. You're having a laugh, Rick. I defy you to win. There's to no win fingerprints on a bullet when it goes through your yeah, head at 12,000 miles Yeah, but they can trace it to the right, the same gun, can't they? They can figure that Throw out. Throw the gun away! Okay. No, but they'll find the gun. They always find the gun. Burn I've it! Seen the... No, you can't burn a gun. Rick, my point is... Melt it. No, the point is his fingerprints and stuff. Well, no, wipe it. Rick, you never Wear gloves. kill someone. Wear gloves. They'll, they'll catch up with you. They'll always catch up Will with you. Will they? Oh, I won't then. The ice arrow is the only way. No, the ice arrow is the only way. I bet that was the one case that Columbo didn't solve. That, that was, that's one of them. The other one is, do you know I was saying the other week yeah. about the, uh, the drinks and you chink your glasses and stuff? Yeah. I'll weigh around that, put the poison in the ice cube, you quickly have a swig before it's melted before it's and they'll go, that's all right, I can drink that, it's not dangerous. Just say, oh, I'm gonna want to show you some pictures or something. Let the ice cube melt, the poison goes in the drink, you say, oh, knock that back. Yeah. You look thirsty. They'll have it. They'll die. Genius. That is good. Carl, you and I, man, we're like criminal masterminds. Yeah. All what right? happens when they find the poison in the body and go, well, he was at Carl's house drinking, it might have been... You'd, have, have, been... <laughs> you'd have legged it. Oh, yeah. He'd have been off with his missus and, like, £30,000 or whatever it was. Yeah. Wouldn't <laughs> it? Yeah. So that's perfect as well, is that it? It's a perfect crime, So, Rick. so, so it's, hold on, are all perfect crimes to do with ice? Pretty much. Hmm. <laughs> I love the way he just looks at him fall. <laughs> Roots, maneuver, witness. We were talking earlier about um, people who use Americanisms like yeah. they've used it all their life, and it, it's our pet hate, isn't it, really? Oh. Like just people who say, I was a uh, DJ, and uh, I look, uh, you know, the risk of sounding a little bit, you know, butt licky. Butt, butt licky? What's that? Never heard that. But Don't say butt. Yeah, but I, well, people, I, I heard someone say, he was on my ass. Oh. He was on my ass. Yeah. I've never, what? <laughs> there was, I'll tell you what almost annoys me almost as much as that. There was a guy I used to know who'd pretend, and this guy was like, he'd never done anything wrong in his life. He had no street cred whatsoever. And I was driving along with him once, back from somewhere. And a police car just pulled out and was just following us along the road, because police cars sometimes do. Not following us, just happened to be driving in the yeah. same direction. And he went, hey, up the pigs, watch it. <laughs> like, like what, I was supposed to think, what, you've done some crime? Yeah. You're part of Grand Theft Auto 03, and I, we, I better be careful, because you've got some knocked out, off gear in the back. Yeah. You will watch it, it's the bloody pigs. Or a dead, just play it cool, play it a cool. dead, a made man that you just exactly. killed in the boot. Nonsense, and it's, I just was so annoyed with that, that, kind of pretending to have street cred. I know, just that, one, I remember once, right, an American came to our I school. Mean, it's, it's fascinating to me how easy... Steven is annoyed with everything and everyone. Just everything bothers him. It's weird. <laughs> if you find something on sale, it bothers him. If, it, if it's not on sale, it bothers him. It's just everything. I don't know. <laughs> He's such a grumpy guy. We were about 13 or 14. Once, right, an American came to our school. We were all about 13 or 14. And he was just, the, he was like, you had to be his friend. And it was like people vying for his attention because he was sort of like this cool American bloke, right? And uh, he was like good, good at sports, straight. He's always, you know, it's just great. And uh, I remember someone saying like tube, a toothpaste, and he and he laughed, said tube, tube. And I go, well, what is it? They said it's tube, it's tube, right? And people go, no, it's tube, right? and they go, it's tube, right? And I went, I say, I say tube. <laughs> he went, and they sort of looked at me, and they just thought, you liar. <laughs> I said, no, I say, oh, let me just think, oh, tu tu no, I say tube. Oh. When you're a kid, like, any American you ever meet is the coolest thing. It yeah. doesn't matter if it's a huge, fat bloke yeah. wearing Bermuda shorts and a camera on his neck, it's cool, because they yeah. speak with an American accent. Well, that is cool. And, that's, and they say... Being a huge, fat bloke in Bermuda shorts is cool. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's what you keep telling yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have seen so many videos of... Just people from anywhere that isn't China being in China, and 
the just the amount of attention and stuff they get just walking down the street people like they'll just casually film to them just walking down the street the amount of people that just look at them or come up to them talk to them ask them where they're from even if they speak and some of them they, they get shocked when they speak chinese which all right that's fair enough but um especially little kids it's like it's 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 like somebody seeing bigfoot like oh my god it's bigfoot he's real you know it's like that kind of wow reaction and that's just i don't know that'd be annoying i wouldn't like that i wouldn't i wouldn't be comfortable <laughs> but um and you know there's plenty of videos of people that live there and they've lived there for years and they still it's just every time they go out it's the same thing it's just I don't know if it's necessarily, oh, this p person's so cool, they're not from here, or what it is, but it's crazy to me. I don't know. Um, I got a lot of attention when I was, I hated it, when I got here, because I was an American in Argentina, and that sucked. You had to answer the same five questions a hundred times over it was exhausting and to this day every time i meet someone and they find out because i do not say it but um well i was with a lot of people that just bring it up knowing it bothered me but whatever it's always the same freaking questions is it true that you guys eat like eggs and pancakes for breakfast I don't, but yes, they do. <laughs> and it's just always the same freaking question. Do you know? Oh, how's New York? I've never been to New York. Oh, just like, do you know? And they'll just name like some random famous person. <laughs> like, no. Oh my God, do you know Beyonce? <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's just always the same freaking questions over and over. Oh, and they'll make you pronounce McDonald's and stuff and just like, pfft. leave me alone. I always hated that. Always. Growing into that look, then the shorts is cool. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what you keep telling yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm growing into that look, says Rick. <laughs> yeah. Forty. The Canadian tourist look. Absolutely. <sighs> but no, so anything you know, sidewalk. <coughs> yeah. I mean, if I could say, like, when I was sort of fourteen, if I could have said sidewalk fender, you know, yeah. I always wanted to go into a sandwich shop and just order something on rye. I want to be one. I want to be one of those eighty-year-old. Um, sort of Yiddish blokes, those old, you know, sort of like old vaudeville Jewish guys um, that, you know, they sit in diners and talk, you know, like, like, like Walter Matow talks. Right, yeah, yeah, that. yeah, I, yeah. I want to I wanna grow into that, a long coat, and I'll go, ish. Yeah, or you they. Yeah, maybe I'll start. Yeah, well, convert to Judaism initially. Yeah. For your first port call, and then just tour the vaudevillian, you know, circuit. Yeah. In the cat skills well, of the Some kind of schmuck. Yeah. Something like that. What do you, uh, Carl, are you, would you like to be American? No, not at all. Really? Got me nerves. When I was in, um... <laughs> Got me nerves! When Being a American. whole nation there. Just... <laughs> when I was in Barbados at Christmas. Oh, and then drop right. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's loads of them there, cos that, that's... Was that when you were doing a bit of extra sort of waiting? Because <laughs> you, you, you were sort of, clean, your girlfriend was cleaning rooms, wasn't went she? There. Went there for Christmas, and, um... Um, there's loads of them there, because that, that's, like, really close to America. That's, like, uh, Blackpool, Easter <laughs> Manchester. Sounds it's really exactly big, like so that. Carl yeah. talks uh, as amazing. Blackpool, Easter Manchester type. It's thing. exactly like that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's exa that's the analogy a lot of Americans use. So, but I think they call it the tropical Blackpool. They? <laughs> <laughs> but they were going on. That's only all the brochures, I'm sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. And serious now, but yeah, we were going serious. on about the uh, September 11th thing. Yeah. But they call it the, um, of course, uh, this is American. Of course, um... Brilliant. The, uh, the 9-11. The 9-11. That's what they call it. Really? Oh, that's awful. That is, so it's like people who say 24-7. Yeah. Well, I'm Americans say that. my ass off 24-7. Well, Americans that say yeah. that. Well, they're allowed, though. Oh, Americans are. It's, yeah. It's, I'm talking about an English person who might say it. Yeah. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah. Do that yeah. American accent again? Yeah, of course, uh, the, uh, the 9-11. Where, yeah. where are you from? Can <laughs> <laughs> we find <laughs> America? <laughs> that's, that's how they sounded in Barbados. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. sure, sure. But <laughs> Carl, Did you do any other impression? But Carl doesn't. I, I very much doubt that Carl likes newfangled countries like America. Yeah. He doesn't like London. No, true. So he's, he's not going <laughs> to. Have you been to America? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Went to Florida. 
No, they got me again. Got on your nerves? Um, yeah. <laughs> went, went for some food. Yeah. Um, and it was the last few days, I didn't take much money with me, and we were in Florida, and we were hungry, and we <laughs> went for some steak. <laughs> And <laughs> we had our dinner and that, and it's, I think it's their equivalent to the Angus Steakhouse. Yeah. Right. Okay. And um, sat down, had, had the steak, and that's huge, big, big portions. But anyway, we didn't have much money left, and we had like another two days left, so we didn't leave. We didn't have much money for a tip. Do you know how over there they expect it? Yeah, a big tip, yeah. So um, we left what we could, and I don't know what it was. It might have only been the equivalent to 60 pence. Yeah. But he didn't have to do that much. We didn't have loads of courses because we didn't have much money, so he brought us like the main course, and I don't know, a sure, couple, sure, couple sure, of sure, Diet sure. Cokes. And, um, Anyway, left them the, the, the 60p yeah. on the way out, and it comes running over. Excuse me, sir, you can have this back. Excuse because it wasn't me. enough. I mean, yeah, it's outrageous. What did you say? I said, all right, then. <laughs> I, mean, I, well, I needed it. I mean, I, I thought yeah. it was nice to leave them something, but obviously it wasn't enough, so... I have heard, I guaranteed I haven't been into to the States for almost 20 years now. But I have heard sources on social media. Um, apparently, tip culture in the States is beyond, beyond out of control. They will make you tip for things that don't make any kind of sense at all. Just people doing their job and expect a tip. Like, uh, there's obviously people take it to the extreme to make videos and just comedy about it and stuff but i've seen people that will like if they hold the elevator for you and press the button what floor do you want the four okay then and then when you're about to leave they're like asking you for a tip and stuff like that it's ridiculous it's crazy and most cultures don't have that like in argentina the only people you tip is delivery boys like for food not like packages like if you order pants online and they come that's fine you don't have to it's only when it's food and that's the and honestly it's not even a big thing so they don't like most people don't even do it and sometimes if you if you give a tip that's like decent they do not do the 10 or 12 percent 15 percent nah, nah they'll just give you whatever they can and when you do like it doesn't matter how much it is they're extremely happy because they're not always expecting it but giving back a tip is absolutely freaking crazy i mean and i <laughs> i love that he took it back <laughs> but that's just wow i've heard so much stuff about just ridiculous things asking for tip i can't even think of examples because of just how what like you go to a clothing store and somebody sells you a shirt and you're, they expect you to tip them i mean what what Crazy, crazy stuff. It was nice. Yeah. I thought, well, I needed it. I mean, I, I thought yeah. it was nice to leave them something, but obviously it wasn't enough, so got us a couple of more. Is it good notes. fun with you on holiday? <laughs> 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 I mean, do you enjoy yourself? <laughs> yeah. Do people go with you on holiday? I get bored after about four days. You surprised me. What a good <laughs> question. What, what do you expect out of a holiday, Carl? What do you? What do you? What do you go sort for? Of soak up some of the culture. Yeah. <laughs> No, he was really good at that. Nah, -uh, dude, he was all in for a lot of the culture and all the places he went. Nah, -uh, dude, like obviously not willingly, but he 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 put a lot of effort into some stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what what did you learn about Barbados <laughs> while you were there? A lot of crabs on the beach. <laughs> Oh my god, oh, that looks awful. I just imagine him sitting there with his knotted <laughs> hanky on his head. I like that. Not bad. Bit of Gary Newman there. That's uh, Richard X and Sugar Babes. Our Freaks Electric. Is that one of those um, things where they've taken one song and they've laid it over the top of the other? Brilliant. It's good, no. No, it's good. Right, good. Oh, good. Yeah, it's good. Classic. Um, uh, yeah, well, we're, we're nearly done, aren't we? We are almost finished. Oh, which, which is a couple of um, great tracks. With a few laughs. Maybe we've had what a few laughs. What happened in the 24 hours? hours? Exactly. I've perked up. Yeah, you have, you have. Yeah, you've no, lost it a bit, though. You feel a bit, it sounds, it sounds like you're a bit down again. Well, it's, uh, that's, that's just two hours work okay. in one long sure. stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon we could do a three hour show now. No, 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 no. No? No, no, no. Skin of the teeth sort of just. Yeah, we barely got away with this. Really? This is beginning to fall apart now. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, but yeah, we've had a good time. Eh? We've, had, we've had a few laughs, as you say. 
Um, I just think a car on the beach. He said he started winding the crabs up because he got bored. Mm. And he started throwing sand at them. It's like a child's experiment. When you were in California, you weren't aggravi aggravating butterflies, were you? Because, <laughs> oh, that's a misdemeanor. <laughs> it's scary, though. The weather's really freaky. Where? In, uh, California. Is it? Yeah. Is it? In the day, it's dead nice. Come six o'clock, it goes black. And then oh. the rain comes down. It's freaky. Uh, is that every single day, Carl, or was that just the week you were there? Uh, every day I was there for about a week. It happened every day. Uh, so as far as you're concerned, that happens all, all year round. <laughs> yeah, <good thing. laughs> what you're saying is if people are booking holiday, they should be conscious of it. Yeah. It will always happen. California yeah. oh, That's a fact. It does. I think it does. But, but, okay. but why did you start throwing sand at crabs, by the way? Just because um, you get bored on the beach. You sat there, you, you look around, <laughs> um, and then I saw these crabs and I was watching the way they move around. And yeah, what they funny, do, isn't it? Sort of to they annoy you the way they moved. No, I mean, it works for them. <laughs> <laughs> Good of you. But, uh, okay. it was just uh, what I was weighing up is they're yeah. quite close to the sea, so sure. I was watching the sea come. They like it close to the sea, don't they? Yeah, yeah, but they don't like it too close. No. So, like, the sea was coming close to them, they'd run towards me. Yeah. So as the sea came in to, to them, I was chucking sand the other way, and it was like, ooh. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. Really? <laughs> ooh, yeah. How long did that keep you occupied for? <laughs> Four hours. The last three days, was that? <laughs> Have you ever seen, uh, I don't know if I've described this before, do you remember a classic Paul Daniels wow. episode where uh, Paul is having tea with some baboons, I think, Jim's yes. full circle. Again? And, um, yeah, right? He's got a little box, and inside the box is a mirror, and he gives it to the chimp, and it looks in the box, and it's confused by its own reflection, it can't figure it out, so it's looking behind the box trying to figure out, is there another monkey behind it? Yeah. yeah. It goes on like that, it's dazed and confused, it was there for, for weeks, just staring into it. I imagine you're a bit like that on the beach. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I think that's my analogy. I, yeah. Paul Daniels chimps. <laughs> yeah. I kept a crab once for a week when we went to Bognor. Um, it was me and my, my, and my nan in an Oh, way. party time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man alive. You, look, you, haven't, the, you, the, haven't the lived, never you haven't lived until you've woken up to the sound at three o'clock in the morning of your nan um, having a we in a tin bucket in an echoing round a caravan. Hello. Yeah, I was about nine. You'd brought a chick back. <laughs> I was about nine, right? And I just kept a crab in a first day of in the bucket. In a. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. Uh, no, I found it on the beach and I brought it back and I kept it in a little bowl in the sink. And then the last day, it started to smell a bit. And then the last day, my mum said, "Go and put it back," and I went and put it back. <laughs> So I had a pet crab for a week. And did it did it die? What happened to no, it? No, no, it was it just got bored. Sure. It just it didn't do a lot. Did it the... start throwing sand at you? <laughs> 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 oh. Oh, Listen, God. I think we better play some more because we've got yeah. a few so songs to squeeze in. Uh, I just wanted to play a track. Um, I was watching MTV the other day and sure. I was a bit confused. Yeah, so was I. I like that because um, I saw a video for the Electric Soft Parades "Silent to the Dark." Yeah. But it was called "Silent to the Dark 2." But it was the same song. It sounds like they've redone it. The video is different to the old video. I was very confused. Hopefully someone will phone in and solve it for me. Anyway, this is the original Silent to the Dark. Still a good track. Let's hear it, Kyle. They didn't give anything away today, did they? They didn't even mention it. I thought it was like a weekly thing. Silent to the Dark, the debut single by the Electric Soft Parade. I like that. Yeah. Very good. Very good choice there. Apparently discovered by XFM, is that right, Carl? Yeah, sent a tape into Claire Sturgis. You see? Big time now. What did she do with it? And sold it? <laughs> yeah. Got a little five pound starter bag of skag. Exactly. Oh, and bless the rest her. is history. Well, w I've enjoyed myself. I have. But can I just say, I we don't to. just like, you know, muck around and do stupid things and play great music. <laughs> We're also informative. And we I want to leave London with this tip that Carl, for no reason, just told me. Um, do you want to do it, Carl, or shall I tell him what you just said? Oh. Rick, we haven't got much time, you better explain yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you got, he said, you've been on the Millennium Wheel, I went, no, he went, well, if you do, here's a tip. Go when there's lots of disabled people on there. And I, I was up for it, I went, why? He went, you get more for your money, because I have to keep stopping and letting them off. <laughs> you get an extra six minutes. <laughs> All right? Good, solid advice if you tell anybody you can get it today or tomorrow. Yep. Thanks. Song for the ladies, Rick. I'll leave you with Lamb Chop. A lot of people aren't a fan of Lamb Chop for some reason. They don't like the way he sings, but this is a beautiful song. That's the reason. Up with That's people. the reason. See ya. I never heard Bye. of Lamb Chop. <laughs> uh, that glitter is magical. That was fun. That was... I, I genuinely 
love every time Carl says I have a fact. It's just it's so it's such a beautiful thing. Oh my god. An extra I love the fact that he timed it. The extra time on the wheel thing. What? Jeez. These guys are fun. I don't it's it's so interesting to me that they're just so entertaining when they're just what was the gobbledygoo? It's just <laughs> to me it'd be poppycock or whatever. When they're just around just nothing, just chatting and saying about just chatting about how boring their chatting is and it's still entertaining. It just it bog mind boggling to me. It's just so crazy. I don't know why they're so entertaining. And obviously Carl adds so much. I love it. That was awesome. That was great. And the Carl gifts never, never. Uh, seems to make me laugh. That was just beautiful. Anyway, thank you so much, Rusty. Awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Oh, man. Always puts me in a good mood. So there you go. It is now over. So I am now going to leave because I have nothing more to watch or to say. It's done. It's over. Also, oh, I imagine you guys noticed, but it's... 8,000 degrees over here, so uh, I could use some, like, water with some ice or something. So I'm going to go and do that. Anyway, lovely humans. Thank you. You're awesome. Hope you enjoyed. See you soon. Mm -hmm.